in the old time radio series, Sports News Reel, the host, a trained actor, recounts a strange story involving a kidnapping attempt on the German Kaiser, in the aftermath of the First World War. Now, on HistoryRadio.org, we bring you a segment from that sports broadcast. The following program is being shortwaved overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. C-O-L-G-A-T-E, Colgate presents Bill Stern. With a Colgate Shave Cream Sports News Reel. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, is on the air. Bill Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, with stories rare. Take his advice and you'll look keen. You'll get a shave that's smooth and clean. You'll be a Colgate brushless fan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bill Stern bringing you the 286 edition of the Colgate Shave Cream Sports News Reel. Our guest tonight is the president of the New York Yankees, Mr. Larry McPhail. But first... Portrait of a soldier souvenir. Twenty-seven years ago, when the First World War was ending and Germany was beaten, the most hated man in the world was the German Kaiser. He was just as hated as Hitler is in this war. And yet in the last war, when Germany was beaten, the Kaiser fled from Germany and took refuge in neutral Holland. The Allies knew where he was, but they made no move to get him. And that's the way things stood. Until one night, shortly after the war was over, eight American soldiers were seated around a table in a French restaurant when they decided to do something about it. If the Allies wouldn't go after the Kaiser, well, they would. Sure, sure, he was in a neutral country, but so what? Hadn't he started this war? All right. These eight American soldiers would do what the Allied armies had failed to do. These eight American soldiers would go get the Kaiser. The more the eight Americans talked about it, the more determined they became. Until finally one of them, a boy named Larry McPhail, stood up and someone shouted, Sit down, McPhail! But Larry McPhail stood his ground. We've been doing a lot of talking, he said. But if you're going to kidnap the Kaiser, let's get started. And so it was that eight Americans in two automobiles set out to kidnap the Kaiser. They headed for the Dutch border. And in the eerie light of the early morning, they crossed that border into Holland. But cars roared through sleepy towns, stopping only for gas or food. Three hours later, they were only 100 miles from the little village of Ameronigan, where the Kaiser was living. And two hours later, they were there. Cautiously, they stopped their cars, got out, and cut all the phone wires leading to the castle. They approached the front gate, where a German sentry stopped them. But they talked their way past him. And finally, finally, unbelievably, they were actually at the front door of the Kaiser's castle. It was Larry McPhail who knocked on that door. The door swung open, and the eight American soldiers stepped inside. The Kaiser was in the next room. He agreed to come in and meet the Americans when suddenly the Germans discovered that all the phone wires had been cut. Immediately, the eight Americans knew that their plans had gone wrong and that they'd better get out of there and get out fast. And they did get out, getting out empty-handed. Empty-handed? No, not quite. For on the way out... Larry McPhail grabbed an ashtray off the Kaiser's smoking table. It bore the Kaiser's imperial crest, and it was the only souvenir those eight American soldiers had to show for the time when they'd almost kidnapped the Kaiser. When Larry McPhail came back to the United States, he brought the Kaiser's ashtray back with him. Then a strange series of visitors began to arrive at his office. They were all Germans, and they all told him the same thing. He'd taken the Kaiser's lucky ashtray. The Kaiser was superstitious, and he regarded that particular ashtray as his good luck charm. He wanted his lucky ashtray back. It wasn't that the ashtray had any real value. It was just that the Kaiser regarded it as his good luck charm. And the Kaiser became so insistent in 1941 that he'd get it back, that he sent a special German emissary all the way over to America to get that ashtray back. And this German emissary told Larry McPhail... Mr. McPhail, I represent His Imperial Highness, the German Kaiser. I am prepared to pay any reasonable amount for his ashtray, which you have. You see, he regards it as more than an ashtray, as a sort of good luck piece. (laughs) I see you have it on your desk. That was as far as the German got. Larry McPhail lost his temper. He told the German that the Kaiser's good luck ashtray would never go back to the Kaiser. And with that... Larry McPhail picked up that ashtray and smashed it. Maybe the Kaiser was right. For when that ashtray was smashed, his good luck ran out. The Kaiser died on June the 4th, 1941. Call it a coincidence, if you will. But the Kaiser died a sudden death on the very day his good luck ashtray was smashed by Larry McPhail. 
And now, speaking from Washington, D.C., is Larry McPhail in person. The man who once tried to kidnap the Kaiser. The man who today is the president of the mighty New York Yankees, Larry McPhail. Good evening, Bill. There is one thing you forgot about that ashtray. What's that, Larry? Well, when I got the Kaiser's ashtray, I had to get it so quickly. I didn't have time to remove the lighted cigars that were in it. I just shoved the whole thing in my pocket, and those lighted cigars ruined a perfectly good trench coat. <laughs> C-O-L-G-A-T-E, Colgate presents Phil Stern. With a Colgate Shave Cream Sports Newsreel. Phil Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, is on the air. Phil Stern, the Colgate Shave Cream Man, with stories rare. Take his advice and you'll look in, you'll get a shave that's smooth and clean. You have just heard a segment from a 1945 sports newsreel and a story involving a kidnapping attempt on the German Kaiser in the aftermath of the First World War. We willed it not. Wake up, England! Dulce et decorum est pro patria mori. This is HistoryRadio.org, a free educational radio stream, remembering the First World War.